this video, we are going to talk about the Springfield building codes, which is what we are going to be using on our project. It's just taken off of their website, and we'll go to their website. I'll show you all of that in a minute. But if I were going to do a building here in Springfield, these are the codes I have to fly by. So you can see there are a lot of codes. Most of them have the word international in them. So again, those are codes that are put out by the ICC. So if I'm doing a swimming pool, I need to go with this code. If I'm doing something that's mechanical, I need to go by this code. If I'm doing something that's a sewer project, I need to do that, along with the building code if it's a building. <coughs> You'll see these went into effect February 9th, so just fairly recently. And even when I, before I started working here at OTC, they were talking about getting the 2018 pass. So we knew that it was coming. So that's been a process to go from 2012 to 2018. It happened just overnight because it has to go through approval of city council and all that. Again, each one of these, if I go into the city's information, they're also going to have amendments for each one of those. So not only do I check those codes, I have to check the amendments that they have put together for each one of those codes because that may either give me an exemption from something in the code or it may add something to what's in the code. So I have to double check and make sure that I'm doing everything that's supposed to be done. Zoning. That's the other code that the city of Springfield has. So for example, can I build a warehouse in a residential neighborhood? No. So as you can see, the city of Springfield has divided the whole city into these certain categories. And we have some specialty categories in Springfield that like when I first started, again, we didn't have, like we have the West College Street District. I mean, I grew up in that part of town and I knew it was there, but we didn't have it as a special district. Okay? Commercial Street has its own district now. Center City has its own district. Okay? And that's because come from trying to preserve um, the history of those areas. So those have special zoning requirements to help me. If you look at the top, it starts with residential. And you can see we have actually six different types of residential zoning. We have residential single family. That's what a lot of us live in as a house. We have residential townhouse. We have low density. That's kind of like your duplexes and uh, medium density. And then High density, those are going to be like big apartment complexes. Manufactured homes has its own category. What is a manufactured home? Trailers and mobile homes, yes. We have office districts, we have government and institutional. If you look where OTC is, we are a government institutional. Uh, so again, we're going to have special requirements for this particular area. Uh, limited business, general retail, highway commercial. Most of the property along Glenstone is considered highway commercial, okay, because Glenstone is considered a highway. Um, commercial services, and then it just goes on into some manufacturing and industrial, etc. And it's color code, so you can kind of see how, how it lays out in one group. So again, if I want to build a certain building and I find a piece of property, What's one of the very first things I should do before I go buy that farm? Find out what it's owned and make sure I can build my building there. Okay, last thing you want to do is buy a piece of property, then try to go through a zoning hearing to get it changed. And you can do that. You've probably seen the orange signs around town that say zoning hearing, that sort of thing. That's probably what that's about. Probably somebody's wanting to change the use group of that property so they can make it whatever they want to put on it. That costs a lot of money and a lot of time, and sometimes you don't win. Regular, it will also, zoning also tells us how big the lot size can be based on certain requirements, where you have to place your building. We don't like to, like say in a residential neighborhood, um, you have all these houses that are back, say 50 feet from the road, and you come in and you want to build your house 10 feet from the road. City so probably not going to do that. Okay, so you got to check all those kind of things. Bulk density and the height. Okay, I can use, I have a really good example for this one. When I worked for uh, Mercy doing projects for them, most of you are probably familiar with the white side building over on Fremont. That building was originally designed to be six stories. And they built two stories to start with. I won't go into how that all works, but anyway. And that was back probably like in the 70s or 80s. And so then when we got ready to add the additional floors onto the building, we had to go back and look at zoning 
and zoning had changed and we could only go up five stories. Why do you think? What's across the street from those buildings? Houses, okay? So they changed the height restriction on those buildings along that road so they don't completely shadow all of that residential neighborhood. Things that most of us probably don't even think about. Okay. So again, zoning is going to tell you that. Also, if you do things that aren't right, you can be cited and have to go to a hearing or whatever and, and pay fees probably be wrong like that. So zoning is important. Okay. So it's really important that you make sure that you know what you're doing in that. Right, like if I build a commercial building next to say a residential neighborhood, the city's going to require me to put in a fence, okay? Because they don't want headlights shining in there, they don't want the noise, they may even make me put some shrubbery up there to help with noise. There's all kinds of things in zoning that's going to tell me that. So again, that's what your zoning is going to tell you, and it's going to be more specific to a location. Okay? Looks like the project I did in North Carolina for O'Reilly's. That was a zoning ordinance that said it had to match the other buildings. That was not a building code ordinance. That was a zoning. So what's going to be important to us? Okay, you guys are going to do a commercial building, and it's going to be an office building. Okay, that's probably one of the easiest buildings to design. Probably has some of the fewest restrictions of anything. So I'm making it easy for you. Again, how the zoning ordinance is set up, and we'll go through this on the ordinance. Um, but Division 4 are the district regulations, and you can see that's divided up into categories. This is the category that you're going to be working through, okay? So that's in Division 4 under Office. And if you look over here under the Office Districts, again, it's broke down even further under that, okay? So um, depending on where yours is located, you have to look at those items also, all that kind of um, if I were doing a residential group home, what is a residential group home? Yeah, something along those lines. So again, it has some special categories. Um, gates across private streets. Do we have any gates across any private streets here? Yeah, we kind of do over here in the, that area over there. Um, community gardens, this has become a big thing. Okay, a lot of communities now have gardens. We have a whole zoning ordinance portion on community gardens what's allowed and what's not allowed and how it's maintained and all that kind of followed up with any of that. Um, and then sidewalk and pedestrian walkways. I think the city of Springfield now says that if you are doing a site, you have to have a sidewalk somewhere where it's at. So um, that way we have more pedestrian walkways. Okay, so that is the conclusion of the PowerPoint. So I kind of cheat and I find some PDFs that we can use that we don't have to pay for. So this one is actually the 2012. It is not searchable, I apologize. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, this is what you're going to use to do your code search. So let me get back to the beginning of this. And this one is the 2012. So in the very beginning of it, it's going to have just some general information. And then it's going to list all of the chapters. So each chapter, like chapter 31 is special construction. Chapter 30 is elevators and conveying systems. So if you have like a dumbwaiter, escalator, anything like that is going to fall under that. So to be able to uh, find what you're looking for, you have to be able to go to all that. <coughs> then it talks about, actually has a table of contents. This might be something you might want to print out or something, just a table of contents. Don't print the whole document, please. It's 732 pages. Don't print it. Okay. Um, but that way you at least know the chapters of what you're looking for. Then it goes into scope and administration. How is this administered? What is involved? All that kind of thing. And then it's going to have a whole bunch of definitions. Okay? If you're not sure if you're reading through the code and it says something that you're not sure what that means, go look in the definitions. Okay? Because it's going to talk. Sometimes when you're doing occupancy, it's going to talk about gross versus net. And if you don't know what that means, you might want to go here and look and see what that means. It's going to go into use and occupancy classification. So this is one of the first parts of the code you want to look at. You want to find where your building's going to fall. Okay? 
start out, we have assembly. What might assembly be? Church, theaters, all kinds of things. So those are assembly group A. But you'll notice underneath that, you have assembly group A1. You have assembly group A2, A3. So it's going to break those assemblies down into different things because there are lots of different types of assemblies and they all don't meet the same requirements. Okay? So when you're looking, if I'm going to be doing a bowling alley, if I look at group A1, that's not in there. If I look at group A2, it's not in there. If I look at group A3, there's my bowling alley. So I want to make sure that I find the correct assembly for that. And as you can imagine, codes are a little bit stricter on bigger assemblies, right? Because you're going to have a lot more people there. Okay. <clears throat> then we go into B for business. This is where your project is going to fall. Okay. If you look under B, there might be some things here that you might not think are really that classification. Like medical clinics. That's a business occupancy. Okay? Things like that. So this is the category that we're going to be working in. Then it goes on to group B, e, which is education. Okay? And then group F, which is um, industrial. And again, they have some subcategories. And then group H, which is um, high hazard group. Okay? And again, those are going to have a lot more stringent code requirements, especially in the fire area, things like that. Then from there, it continues on, and it goes into some specialty things, etc. The thing to notice is that whatever section I'm in, like this is section four, it starts, the number starts with like 4.0 something, 4 something. And then, like this is 4.06.6, .6, so there are five other things prior to that for this. Okay? I call the code book the big rabbit hole. Okay? As you can start here, and you're going to read it, and it's going to say, okay, I can do this, this, and this, but you also need to check this. So then I go check that. I read that, it says, but now you need to go check this. And before you know it, you're off in something that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're doing. So just be careful if you're ever using the code not to get lost in the rabbit hole because some of it just doesn't even pertain at all. Okay? But a couple of things to point out is lots of times there may be, and I don't think this is an exception, but it may say you have to do this, this, and this, but if your occupancy is under this, you don't have to do that. So you want to make sure that you do read all of the stuff that specifically pertains to, to what you're doing. So that's kind of how you maneuver through that code book. Okay? So then the next one that's extremely important is the ANSI book. And again, it has, it has a table of contents that's going to break it down into the, the areas. This one is extremely important. And this one is extremely important. It's all important, but those are the areas that you're going to be looking at. Okay? And I want to just point out just a couple of things. This one has a lot of um, graphics with it, which is really nice. This is the site stuff. Remember I said that um, in the bathroom you had to have a five foot turning radius? Okay. That's what's telling you this right here. I can also have this shape that will suffice for that too. So sometimes you can have some alternates. Um, this is the clear floor space for wheelchair accessibility. It needs to be 30 inches wide, 48 inches deep. So if I need to put a wheelchair somewhere, a person in a wheelchair needs to get to, they need to have that minimum requirement. Okay. And again, here's like some little alcoves, things like that. I told you that most signage and stuff can't be over four feet high because that's what they say a person can reach from a wheelchair easily. Okay. Um, I talked about the bathroom. Remember I said that um, like the ones down here, it's like 
that where it's just straight. You can, as you can see in here, it kind of has a little angle thing, and you can build an angle thing, and there's some dimensions for that as we get there. Stairs, there's the reach, 48 inches. It's a maximum that somebody can reach from a wheelchair. From the front, side reach is a little bit, bit more. I don't remember exactly. Um, no, yeah, it's the same for side reach. And if there's something there, then you gotta lower it. All kinds of things. Accessible routes. This is the one that's important. This chart right here needs to become your best friend. Okay? You need to probably print this out, just that page, not the whole book. Print this out and keep it handy when you're doing your design. Okay? What this is telling me are the clearances that I have to have at a door for handicap accessibility, depending on which way I'm going in the door. So I might have to look at two instances, because I can have somebody coming in the door, I also have somebody going out the door. Okay? So for example, this door here pretty much has a straight on entrance, and the door is swinging out. So in front of this door, I have to maintain on the uh, stop side, I have to have 12 inches clear. I have that. I have probably 24 inches. Okay? And then I have out in front of this door here, I have to keep 48 inches clear. Okay? So let's talk about that bathroom door down here. Okay, that door swing which way? Hmm? Swung in. From that sand out here, it swung in. Right? Okay, so if I look at a door swinging in here, again, that pertains, I don't know, the door is flipped the other way, and I have all that clearance going in that door. But if I'm coming out that door, so that would have the door swinging out again, I still have to have 12 inches. And we didn't have 12 inches there, did we? It was right up against the door. So um, that impedes into that, that space. So when you're doing your doors in your building, not only do you have to remember to do the egress to swing out, you also have to make sure you have the proper clearances. Okay? And I do check those. The other thing that's going to be in here um, is the bathrooms. But I've got a better source for you on bathrooms when we get ready to do that. Um, this goes into like elevators, signage, all kinds of handicap things. Site. But again, zoning is going to determine more of that. And real heights. Here it gets into the bathrooms. Here is what a handicap stall has to be. I think it's 56 by 60. We typically just make them 60 by 60. That's here. That sort of thing. It tells you where your grab bars need to be. Okay? What height they are, how far from the wall they start, the length of them, the diameter of them, all of that sort of thing. It's going to tell you um, where the Toilet paper dispenser needs to be. David, this is where I was telling you guys the toilet paper things aren't in the right place. Maybe down here. <laughs> but they're big, so I don't. But anyway, so the code is going to tell you um, a lot of stuff like that. But the big thing you're going to use out of here are the bathrooms information and the door things. Okay? So. I told you I would take you to the City of Springfield's Building Development Services. Okay, so again, if I do a project here, I have to do a set of construction documents, and I have to submit it to the city. Okay, well there's a whole bunch of information here about how to get a permit, how to apply for a permit, how to do a pre-project meeting with the city, which is very important. I highly suggest that. Um, things like that, because I can also use an example for that. Um, I had a client that wanted to do a restaurant down on Commercial Street, and um, we met with the city prior to doing that building, and by the time we got done, the owner was like, no way am I going to spend that kind of money to fix that building. 
so instead of wasting all of our time doing the design for the building and the drawings and all of that the owner decided it wasn't going to be worth it to do the project so, so those are important um, so building development services that's where you go to get your building permits it tells you the codes right there okay so it tells me the latest codes and most city services and county or whatever are going to have this information for you so that's how you manipulate through that then the big one that I want to show you is zoning okay so under the zoning page this is actually um, under planning and zoning um, there's two things here on this page one is the zoning ordinance and one is the zoning map okay remember the map we saw up there we'll start with that so right here is the zoning and zoning and subdivision map zoning ordinance which is over here on the right I love their zoning ordinance site okay so user friendly so easy to find what you want to find so we said that most everything we're going to do is going to be under what division? Was it four? Yeah, so if I click on four, there it's going to give me my office stuff. So if I click on office, now over here to the side, it's already taken me to that part of the zone coordinate. So the first thing that I, I see when I come here is subdivision to office institutional and special district. Underneath that I see office district, so that's the part that I want to be concerned about. Tells me what kind of things I can have in there. Okay. So again, I need to check to make sure I'm putting the right kind of business in that place. Then there are some what they call conditional uses. Okay, these are some other things that you can get approval to do, but you have to have approval to do them, such as a bed and breakfast, things like that, okay? Funeral homes, mortuaries. And again, there are some use limitations, okay? So I gotta look at that, make sure I don't fall into that category. Here's where it starts telling me what my building can and cannot be, okay? First thing it tells me that the maximum structure height is 35 feet except okay there's always exceptions sometimes you gotta read everything you know then it's going to tell me also i have to have so much what they call front yard backyard and side yard front yard has to be 25 feet so i'm going to make sure that my building sets that okay and I'll have a side yard and a backyard. And these side yards vary depending on what's zoned next to it. So again, we'll look at all that with your building. We'll get that all worked out. But this will be some of the questions you'll be asked. Like, if I ask you what the front yard is on the assignment today, you need to put all of that. Okay? Don't just put the first one. You need to put all of it. Um, street classification. Every street in Springfield is classified as a certain type of street and that's based pretty much on the occupancy and the use of that street. So a freeway, um, that is like your main highways like 65, 60, those types of things. Expressway, that is like Chestnut, it is an expressway. Okay, so it has a certain required setback. So again, you have to know what the street is. If you don't know what the street is that your building is on, call um, the, the street department and they can tell you what the classification for that street is. So you got to take that into consideration. Then it goes into the open space. Remember I said that you had to have 20% green space? Right there is where it tells you that. Um, so, in the maximum impervious surface is 80%. Um, this tells you design requirements. You have to have a site plan meeting. You have to have a landscape plan meeting. Um, you have to have off street parking. You have to have a storage or a refuge area. Your building will have to have an area for trash. Okay? And according to the zoning code, that trash area has to have a fence around it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, 
mechanical electrical equipment. Shelby's screen. From view. Okay. So if you put something up on a building and you can see it, you're supposed to put screening around it. Things like that. The tension? Water detention? Yeah, yeah. Also, you have to um, calculate your runoff and stuff, and if it exceeds the city's um, requirements, you either have to build detention or you used to be able to pay big money to not have to do it. But I don't know if they still do that or not. Um, so now that gets into government and institutional board. The other part we're going to look at was Division 5, right? And you can also do a search in here. So right up here, you just type in whatever you want. It'll take you to it. So if I go here, again, it talks about different things. Use limitations, setbacks. Oh, what I want to go to. Sorry. I want to go to off-street parking requirements. So here it's going to tell me, based on the use group, how many parking spaces I have to have. And they're all calculated differently. Okay? So make sure that you get in the right one. So for us, one for each 350 square foot of total building floor area. Or there's some alternates, and there's always some exceptions and alternates. So, um, but that's important. There is, I think that's pretty much it. So you can just search that again if you want off street parking. search for it to bring up those sections for you. You can't find what you're looking for. What you're going to do today for your assignment is you're going to do a building code search. And this is set up as a quiz. Most of you know how that works, right? If you're working on it and you have to leave or something, don't submit it. Just leave it. It will save what you've done. Okay. If you submit it, you have to start over again. So you don't want to do that. So, and some of the answers it will not give you the points for until I go in and look at it. So I highly suggest that you just do it the first time, get it completed, let me look at it, okay? And then we'll figure out whether you need to redo it or just re-answer a couple of questions because I don't want you to redo the whole thing. Everybody got that? What do I not want you to do? I only want you to submit it once and then talk to me and like say if you only missed one, not a big deal. If you missed 10, I may have you do a little supplemental something or other. Okay, but most of you should be able to just copy and paste it right out of the, the old ordinances. Um, <clears throat> here are the links to those um, uh, pages like the City of Springfield zoning and to the ANSI and to the Golden Code. Yeah, again, City of Springfield is used in 2018. My version that I have for you is 2012. So that's what we're going to, like I said, they're not going to be that much different. So.